Welcome to Good Day AWWA. Here's your host, David LaFrance, CEO of the American Waterworks Association. Welcome to Good Day AWWA. My guest this morning is John Young, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about him. After a 33-year career with American Waters, John has worked on a series of highly complicated, high-profile water issues. Collectively, these projects have led me to oftentimes introduce him as the fixer. And we're going to talk a little bit about why I do that here in a, in a moment or two. John is also the 2019 award winner of the Able Woman Award from AWWA. So let's have a little bit of breakfast, have a conversation with John, and learn about his thoughts on water. John, thank you for joining me here at Good Day AWWA. And so tell me, you've selected blueberry pancakes for us to have as our breakfast meal together. Tell me a little bit about why you did that. Well, thank you, David. I have my uh, blueberry pancakes here with uh, my no water, no coffee, AWWA mug. Um, frankly, I chose blueberry pancakes because I like blueberry pancakes. We harvest some of the best tasting blueberries here in southern New Jersey, although it's a little early in the season for Jersey blueberries. I generally only make blueberry pancakes for my uh, grandkids on the weekends. I figure that if the pancakes can pass their scrutiny, it's certainly good enough for us this morning. I, I would agree with that. And I appreciate it. It's a great, it's a great way to start our day. So I made reference in my introduction that I oftentimes refer to you as the fixer. I do that without your permission uh, and without your consent. But uh, can you just let our, our viewers know a little bit about why you think I call you the fixer? Well, the title fixer doesn't always have the best connotations, especially in the political environment today, but I'll assume you're saying that positively, David. Um, upon retiring from American Water about a decade ago, I've had some pretty unique challenges, or some may say opportunities, thrown my way. I left American Water um, to assume the position of the court-appointed receiver for a large wastewater system in Jefferson County, Alabama, where corruption and compliance issues and financial issues led to the bond trustee requiring receivership of the system. Fixing these immense financial problems, and believe me, they had billions of dollars of debt that they can never repay, and also addressing the the cultural issues within the utility required me transitioning from my technical management background to immersing myself in financial and legal and political challenges. Eventually, the debt issues were resolved, but not after the falling of the largest municipal bankruptcy in U.S. history at that time. Um, I then followed the bond trustees of Detroit, where we investigated the financial situation with Detroit Water and Sewer during the Detroit bankruptcy. bankruptcy. And then I um, followed that for several years working with PRASA and their bondholders in Puerto Rico as we confronted their operational problems, their compliance problems, and their financial problems as well. And then finally, then was frankly some encouragement from AWWA, I ended up in Flint. And for the past five years, I've helped lead the recovery efforts there. Um, I was brought in by the city and by the state of Michigan to not only help fix the lead problems, which frankly, we address pretty quickly, but also deal with dealing with more long-term solutions associated with infrastructure needs and finding additional sources of supply, consent order requirements, and building the sustainable public works department. I certainly, as a fixer, have not been successful in fixing everything I've worked on, but in general, the utilities I've worked with are recovering or on the, the road to recovery. Um, these opportunities have certainly been interesting and they've been challenging and certainly given me a different perspective on the water industry. Yeah, uh, I think that I still think the, the title of the fixer is appropriate. I think it uh, is meant in the most positive light, John, of course. And uh, I do think you've helped all of those communities that you listed. I think you listed four of them right then and as we were going through. But let's let's go to the one that you ended with. Let's go to Flint, because Flint is really shaping, shaped and shaping the way the water industry uh, is engaging with its communities and also addressing lead service lines. So can you give us uh, the update on where Flint is on their lead service lines? 
Well, um, we've made a lot of progress in Flint over the last six years. Um, the water quality has been regulatory compliant for, for several years. Um, we've inspected about 27,000 service lines. We've replaced about 10,000 lead service lines, and we have about 500 service lines left to investigate. Um, we're bringing on a new secondary source of supply for the city to improve the reliability of the system. And we've completed a number of large other infrastructure projects. Now we have some more construction projects which we do need to complete. We have some regulatory issues we need to address and, and certainly we need to build the sustainability of the uh, utility a little bit more. Unfortunately, when we're done, uh, the recovery efforts will have cost probably over a billion dollars. And there are still um, legal actions pending uh, concerning a number of, uh, of public officials. So there's certainly more work to do. Wow. Okay. So there's 500 lead service lines left. There's a billion in, in costs, right? Uh, so as you sit back after these five years of sort of immersing yourself with it, and you sit back and you think about everything that's encompassed here, what are your biggest takeaways besides the technical sort of finding lead service lines, those sorts of things? Or is that really part of those big takeaways? Well, I mean, clearly we've learned a lot of lessons from Flint. Um, remember, the recovery efforts in Flint began about six years ago. So what is common knowledge across the industry it was kind of relatively unknown back six years ago. So, you know, we've helped progress the, the general lead service uh, line knowledge, you know, the importance of doing full lead service line replacement as opposed to partial replacement. Um, the need for good record keeping. Uh, frankly, um, early on, uh, we tried to predict where the Flint lead service lines were and how many there were, and we were wrong. Good records would have really saved us a lot of time and money. Um, we've learned that finding lead service lines are not easy, and there are plenty of different techniques to, to identify the lines, and you may need to use all of them when you, when you go into your system looking for lead service lines. Um, in Flint, we got the understanding that that first one liter draw that, that you take, that first one liter sample, may not tell you the true public exposure you have to lead from a public health perspective. And of course, we've learned the, the importance of, of, of good public education. Um, some of these uh, and similar issues have been confirmed by a lot of other utilities, and, and hopefully uh, some of these issues will be addressed in a new lead and copper rule. Yeah, well, Jen, we'll be talking with representatives from the US EPA this week as part of uh, ACE 21 All Virtual. And I know that's going to be top of mind for them as it is for many of us as well. So, all right, let's move up even a little bit farther back from those sorts of tactical things that we're doing that you've learned in Flint that all of us have learned because of Flint. And what do you think some of those other issues are that will influence water and water utilities in the future? Well, if you kind of look at those high level things, you know, we've been able to address the, you know, the technical and technical issues in Flint over the past six years. And I think we've done a pretty good job. In fact, Flint's been regulatory compliant from lead since 2016. Um, the reason we continue to get, uh, should I say, bad press in Flint, the reason we continue to use home filters in Flint, the reason we continue to get some customer complaints in Flint has really been the lack of public trust. Um, restoring trust in Flint has really been our biggest challenge. Um, you know, I have to understand, after being exposed to the tainted water for 18 months, while continuing to be told by regulators that the water is okay, you can understand why the, the public right now really doesn't trust anybody. They don't trust their water quality. They don't trust their local and state politicians. They, they don't trust the water department. They have, even have problems with their, their regulators. So it's gonna take some time to restore that trust in that community. And, and, and we all know once trust is lost, um, it's really difficult to recapture. Now, so what do we try to do to restore trust? Um, we've increased our messaging. We've changed the people who are delivering the message. And we've really encouraged a lot of public participation. Um, you know, we've done what we said we were going to do, which is really important to, to, to build trust. So hopefully now it's only a question of time, being diligent and being responsive uh, before that public trust can be restored. But it's essential um, to, 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 to solve the problems we have in Flint. So let's talk about that, right? Uh, we've just got a couple minutes left. 
and I'd like you to look into your crystal ball and tell me what it is you see on the horizon uh, for water utilities and uh, to talk about what, what advice you might have in addressing those things that you're seeing emerge. Well, if you talk about, you know, what are the concerns looking forward, I think many people, you know, might respond saying it's a regulatory concern, something like PFAS or, or lead or some other contaminant. To me, I believe the biggest problem is, is infrastructure and its associated uh, issues. Uh, because, you know, infrastructure renewal kind of touches on, you know, many different challenges within, within the water industry. It, you know, it touches on water rates, um, financing, um, affordability, and, and, and the important thing of selling the value of water, you know, to the public, which I know AWWA is really working on. Um, I think the, you know, the physical replacement of the infrastructure, you know, the asset management, the project delivery, the project prioritization, I think that's really the easy part. I think how we pay for infrastructure renewal is, is probably our, our biggest concern. You know, water rates are going to need to increase. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, but there'll be continued resistance to that increase until we sell the value of the products and services you know, that we provide. I think funding and funding sources need to be more creative. Um, and I think ultimately, you know, affordability will be a problem um, to a lot of our customer base. Um, you know, everywhere that I've been a fixer, we've had some common problems. We've had consent orders driven by infrastructure needs. We've had large debt levels and we've had no political will um, to raise rates due to affordability issues. Um, we will continue to see more of these situations, I think, in the future that I've been brought in to fix, you know, unless we're a little bit more aggressive and created in the, in the solutions to address our infrastructure problems. John, thank you so much uh, for spending the morning with us. This has been a great conversation, you know, and your contributions to the water sector and helping to fix hard, complicated projects and problems are, are really appreciated. Can I finish my blueberry pancakes now? Yeah, you can go back to the blueberry pancakes. <laughs> also, I'd like to thank Innovize for sponsoring Good Day AWWA. You can learn more about them by going to the ACE21 sponsor page and clicking on their logo, or simply go straight to their website at innovize.com. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the next episode of Good Day AWWA and Breakfast with Marisa Trikas, the Government Relations Administrator for the City of Roseville, California. We'll be talking about water's next generation of leaders. Coming up in ACE 21 All Virtual is a short entertaining video followed by ACE 21 All Virtual opening general session. I hope to see you there. Thanks and have a great day. Good day, AWWA.